and welcome back to the Game Informer Show. I'm still Ben Reeves. Haven't changed. Uh, Alex is here too. I am here. He's Hello, not friends. Changing. Nope. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but we are joined today by a very special guest, a very prominent voice actress, your friendly neighborhood voice actress. I heard <laughs> Laura Bailey. What's up? Woo! How you guys doing? Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Very excited yeah. to have you on. It's been a pleasure for us. Uh, how you how you doing? What are you up to these days? Oh, I'm good. I was just uh, telling you guys about when I'm potty training my son right now. So <laughs> it's exciting days here in the Bailey Willingham household. Well, Out of so all the jobs you've had, is that probably the hardest? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> By far. <laughs> how old's uh, how old's the little one? He just turned two. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Is he does he know no yet? Is that a fun one? Oh yeah, yeah. he he's a little hellion. He loves it. Yeah. Love it. Cool, cool. He knows. He knows a lot of the the fight back words already. No, in the best yeah, way. He doesn't appreciate anything you do. I'm sure. <laughs> no, he does say thank you. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Have you been teaching? I'm him proud of that language? one. Yeah, he knows more and please and I, what is please? I don't remember. Sorry. <laughs> he said all those things before he uh, he could talk. So yeah. Yeah. Now sometimes my... more is the big one. My nieces and nephew do that too. They'd be like, I don't, I don't even really know what this means. I just know I get what I want. Just <laughs> exactly <laughs> stuff, stuff in my face. Yeah. Well, thanks for being on the show. Uh, obviously we brought you on to talk about your kid, uh, but also, obviously since you're here, maybe we could talk about video games. Hey, you've, you've had a pretty prominent career, uh, but not just in games. You've also done a lot of voiceover work for like animation, TV, stuff like that. Uh. And just to like start it off, I'd love to know between the two, um, like, what's the main differences when you go to record? Oh, How gosh. Between, they? like, animation and video games? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, it's changing. The differences are changing. Because before, when I would do video games, it was like, you would go in for your solo session, you would do your lines, you know, leave for a, a long time, and then come back and do some more. And animation was always, you would, you would get to record with a group of people, you know? But now, I feel like more and more uh, game developers are realizing how important that is to have multiple actors in the booth at once because you do get that great connection there's just uh it's so much more real dialogue when uh you can actually look at somebody in the face and and say it so um so that's changing but i mean motion capture is something that i i have yet to do for any animation but i get to do it all the time for video games so for do you sure. like that is that like do you enjoy that more than just sitting in a booth talking in front of a microphone it's, you know, I love it. Uh, I wouldn't say I like it necessarily more because, you know, voice recording is is a beautiful thing in and of itself. But the great thing about motion capture is getting to fully embody a character and bring a character to life in a way that uh, you don't get to do just behind a microphone. So was a was what was your first experience doing motion capture? It wasn't for Last of Us, right? No, 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 no. Oh. I've done a lot of motion capture. I think my oh God, what was it? It was a long time ago. My first, oh God, my first motion capture game was for a Castlevania game. Uh, like over 10 years ago. Yeah, it was, we went, it was me and Travis and Troy Baker. <laughs> like we were always working together. We, we got cast together um, and they flew us to Japan to work on this game. And then about a year after we shot, they ended up scrapping the entire project because there was another Castlevania project that was getting made at the same time with um, probably Lords uh, of Shadow. I'm guessing. I the think Kojima team. It was uh, maybe it was with uh, God. Why can't I remember his name? Jean Luc Picard. Yeah, that was Lords of yeah. Shadow. So, yeah, yeah, and so ours oh, Patrick, got canceled. Yeah, yeah ours wow. because of him, uh, which is you know makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was so, yeah, the deal with that game? Do you remember the title of that one? No, mm. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you anything about it other than it was like I played two characters, one of which was a, a villain, and one was like this sweet innocent girl. I remember transforming into a giant spider queen at one point. That's that incredible. Cool. Yeah, I'd play that. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would definitely play that. That was ridiculous to film in a mocap suit just to pretend like you're transforming into a giant monster. I would love to have been a fly on the wall for that. I would love to see the footage of that. I'm sure it exists somewhere. It's probably terrible. What's your spider voice sound like? <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot. I hate doing that. It was probably 
like lots of screaming, lots of monster yeah, for sure. <laughs> sort of stuff <laughs> happening. I don't know. Well, something I mean, ridiculously the, over the top. In addition to, I mean, we can go over your career in a bit here, but like in addition to just TV and animation and video games, you've also been doing critical role for a while. Like, how Heck did you yeah. Know? Oh, man. I think. Something? I, the, 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 I think we just celebrated our five year anniversary okay. earlier five. this year. So we've been playing on the stream for five years and then we played before any cameras were involved for three years. So sure. Cool. Has yeah. do you feel like that job and just D and D in general, playing D and D for the camera, do you feel like that has helped you at all in your work? Oh God, yeah. Just for sheer improbability because I mean, for four hours at a time, you know, once a week, we're just like sitting there fully as a character with no dialogue given to us. So you're just, I mean, the ability to to create and have that imagination again and and play in a way that I hadn't I had kind of forgotten. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely come back to me because of that. Um, and I find it's a lot easier since working on critical role, it's, it's so much easier to slip into a character and, and find those like emotional beats in a scene, um, than it ever was before. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. When, uh, when you guys were, were playing it, did you ever think like Amazon would, would come calling and, and want to do the, the animated series for that? Like, what was... no, <laughs> no, we joked about it. Like we literally, like when we first started playing, like when they told us they wanted to film it, like Felicia Day came to Matt and was like, hey, you know, I'm friends with Ashley. I'm friends with you. I hear you guys have like a voice actor group that plays. Can you come play with, on my stream? And we're like, like, we don't actually move around at all. It's going to be so boring. Um, no, like we would have never, ever, ever imagined in a million years that it would eventually become what it what it has. And I, I don't know. I don't know how it happened. But um, yeah, every 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 time we think about it, like I see scenes from the animated series that we're working on now. And I'm just like giddy. I start giggling almost every time because I can't believe it's being brought to life in that way. How's the, obviously COVID has messed up everything. I know you guys had to delay the show a little bit, but how's yeah. that process coming along? Have you recorded your lines? Like it, can, yeah. you, can you let fans know like a little update or anything like that? Or? Um, I don't know how much I can say, but yeah, we are definitely still recording. Like that's the beauty of uh, voice acting is that, you can work from home pretty easily as long as you've got the setup for it. Um, so yeah, everybody kind of decked out their home studios and we just made it happen. So we've been still recording every episode, like on a weekly schedule. So, um, yeah, we're, we're full in production. And that's like the same for your voice acting roles. Do you have like a little studio in the basement where you record everything? For yeah. Yeah. We have a studio. Um, yeah. And I, at least once a day I have a voiceover session still. So it's, uh, um, the, the schedule's been pretty consistent. Is that something it, it, you built this year or is that you, you just had? Well, we had, so because... this, what I'm in right now is like our outdoor office and we had the studio in here and um, we like built it, but it wasn't like super soundproof because really the only things we were recording from home before everything hit was just, you know, auditions or one liner like pickups. So it didn't need to be super duper soundproof. And now that, we have to have four hour sessions, you know, very, you know, audio sound, whatever. Um, there we, we have it in the house. It's in a closet now, fully surrounded by walls and clothes and foam and all that. Shit. For sure. I, uh, this is, this is kind of an audio nerd question, but I am an audio nerd. So I'm going to ask it um, okay. like did when, when you're working with not only on, on CR, but then also like on jobs, is that, have they sent you equipment for that or is it just like one mic fits all like you just made sure you got like a sure mic or something like that we got a good mic we got um we just made sure we had like a studio quality mic at home cool um but every single game that records they have their own process of recording and so some of it's over source connect some of it's over you know team viewers some of it's there's so many different systems that people are working off of so usually any new project that i'm starting up there's like a hour long session of just getting all the kinks wor worked out and everything of, of making sure that sound quality is what it needs to be before we move forward. Sure. Well, I'd love to talk about a few games with you here. Yay. Uh, recently, 
is Avengers just came out. You you play Black Widow. I but, I do. Oh, surprise! Can you record some lines here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right on my blue on my podcast mic. Well, I mean, um, you, I'm not surprised you can't remember even, or if you couldn't, because you've played that character so many times now for so yeah. many, not just games. Like you were in, I think, um, Avengers Ultimate Assemble three last year, but then a lot of the shows. Yeah. So, is there anything when you approach that character now? Are they like, all right, you know what to do? Was there anything different with this game in particular that they wanted? Or they well, like, this oh, great. Th- I feel like this game is. I mean, yes, to a point. They like. I know what the voice print is for Black Widow, and and her deliveries are, you know, where my inflections are going to be for her because I know like who she is. But um, this game in particular was a lot more um, gritty and just kind of grown up because a lot of the things that I've been doing as Black Widow in the past have been for you know. Uh, animated series for kids you know and so uh yeah it was just a lot it, it went kind of darker than than we would gotten to go in the past with her which i enjoyed a lot and we got to film it you know it was on the uh mocap stages sure. so we got to actually like be be the superheroes this time for sure yeah, was fun. it yeah was it a little uh, maybe not easier but did you feel a little bit more comfortable because you had done the role but then also too you're doing mocap with some of your good friends in the industry, like, like Troy Baker, like Nolan North, like these. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was very comfortable on set. We, uh, yeah, it, it, we'd worked together so many times in the past that it did feel like, you know, we were a team Like that, that relationship like didn't have to be like we had assembled. Um, yeah, that, that connection didn't have to be created or manifested. It was already just there with all of us. So like from day one of filming, we were a team, you know, which is just great. I guess casting on Sean's part because he he knew all of us in the past and just went with it. Yeah. What's also interesting to me about this is like staying within the Marvel universe, you were also Mary Jane in Insomniac Spider Man, which is yeah. kind of weird, but also <laughs> cool. I mean, I think you did both a good job in both games. Right, but was so. there a difference between the two games or did you feel like the way they approached it was different? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it it is different because it's different studios and everybody has their own, you know, process. Um, So, yeah, it it felt different. But also, you know, playing MJ is very different than playing Black Widow because it is so much more casual um, in in what I'm going to be doing. Um, So, yeah, it, it felt like two completely different things. I think they sound very different, too, which is crazy. I think Mary Jane is probably a little closer to my just like everyday sort of voice, but. What is it? What is it about some of these iconic characters? What like draws you to them? Obviously, you know, ever like it'd be amazing to be MJ. It'd be ma- amazing to be Black Widow. <laughs> right. But like, what what's that common thread that that draws you to them? I just like to be different people. I don't know if there's like a common thread that pulls like from one character to to another. It's just I just love not being myself for a little bit, you know. And I, I've always said like one of the the coolest things about acting is that you get to experience these emotions that probably on a day-to-day basis you you just kind of don't you know like you kind of avoid those at least i do i avoid confrontation i avoid i don't want to be actually sad i you know so getting to do scenes that are like oh gut-wrenching and you go through all these horrible traumatic events like i love that I know you're making a face. It's weird. I don't know why. No, I like no. it, hey, but it's, hey, it's fun to get that little bit of time. Maybe it's therapy. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it has to be just draining when you're, when you're done for the day. It's like, oh, I can't do this it again is, tomorrow. Yeah. 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 And hopefully, you know, the people that are scheduling it, they they don't schedule like back to back, you know, death yeah. scenes. <laughs> yeah. Here's so, a fun day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think originally on like on Last of Us in one day, it was originally scheduled that we were going to shoot spoilers if this is okay um i'll write it down but yeah all right uh spoiler warning for last of us if you haven't finished last of us yeah yeah part two uh we were gonna shoot abby finding her dad on the same day that abby was finding owen and mel (laughs) and it was like oh i don't know if i could do this it was just so much uh so yeah we like rearranged it and everything so it would at least we could have some happies in between there so it wouldn't just be like well, I'm going to go home and sob into my pillow for 24 Yeah, hours. what were the happy scenes you filmed in Last of Us? Did those all get cut? No, there was some happy scenes. Think about the flashback scenes. Yeah. 
All the flashback mm. stuff is like the zebra really was good. The zebra, the zebra is joyful. All the stuff at the aquarium with Owen in the in the beginning, like the the Ferris wheel stuff that that feels like like another time. You know, it's just yeah. It's, happening. it's the same way when I was playing it. Like the like flashback scenes with Ellie and and Joel for the most like some of it was you know oh god I love them I love this I love you know it's happy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm glad you actually brought up uh, the Last of Us and Abby which was a, a secret until the game came out. Was that fun to be a part of a secret? Like how secretive was that even? Did the other cast know you were in it? Oh yeah. Well, the cast knew I was in it. Um, my super close friends knew I was in it and everything, but uh, yeah, it was super, 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 super secret. You know, we, I did that one PSX, I think uh, where I was shown, like they showed the trailer uh, of Abby and the two kids, but nobody knew who they were. And there was all this, these guessing games of is she Ellie's mom? Who is she? And yeah, I wasn't allowed to say anything. I wasn't allowed to say my name. It was did it was you feel crazy. Any pressure to like I don't know with this role in particular, but did you feel any pressure to get like super ripped or anything? Get into characters? No, character? I did. Yeah. I mean, I didn't feel like pressured to, but I definitely did work out um, like crazy when I was first cast. Uh, like a lot of CrossFit, deadlifting, and everything to try to get. Um, my strength up because I knew in some of those scenes, you know, I was going to be carrying around Yara and everything. And, and Grace is smaller than me, but she's still like a, an adult, you know, like a girl. And so um, I was trying to work up to where I could carry, you know, a hundred pound bag uh, for an extended amount of time. Um, but then I got pregnant. <laughs> and so that kind of put a kibosh on all of the, uh, the training as far as that went, because I know some people can still deadlift when they're pregnant there. That does exist, but I was not one of those women. So, well, you were still carrying around another person with you. I was, yeah. you it go. was a much yeah. smaller, a much yeah. smaller weight, but it felt about a hundred pounds at the time. So oh, how, okay. how far into production did that happen? Like how much of your, of your work had you had covered at that point? Or were you guys almost done? Let's see. We filmed, I think I was cast. I was cast right after lost legacy. So, um, I think I, I filmed for like a year or maybe I had been cast for about a year before I found out I was pregnant okay. and then we went through the whole pregnancy and then Ronan was born and then there was another, you know, year and a half until the game came out. So yeah, it was about five years of time that we worked on it. Wow. Um, so yeah, he was in the middle of all of it. For sure. Did that I'm, color I'm... anything like during the game? Like I'm just thinking instantly of the scene with Dina where you like have a knife to her throat and you're getting, yeah. kill. were you thinking that about that at all while you were pregnant? I mean, I, th that scene was after Ronan was already born. Um, it's weird to an extent it does like change your perspective. It just changes like your mental process for things, but I never am approaching scenes as myself like ever. Um, and I'm only, I, I don't ever remember thinking any of my own thoughts in any of those scenes that we were filming. It was always like Abby, Abby, Abby. So, um, I mean, I'm sure it was there, but I was mostly just devastated that these women had, had hurt my friends, you know? Yeah. We, uh, we talked to Neil, uh, what a month ago now, something like that time doesn't exist in the yeah. pandemic, but, <laughs> um, he's talked about, he talked about with us and then on some other stuff, he did not want you as abby like did you know that did you guys uh, kind of like what was that process like of that i have heard that, this that, since yeah. then <laughs> did you guys talk about that after uh he had mentioned that he didn't it, like after i was cast obviously that he had not wanted me as Abby. because here's the thing <laughs> and i've said this before and neil's denied it but i know it happened um i had had a conversation with him years ago after they finished left behind and i was chatting with him and he was like, so uh, you ready to come on board for Last of Us 2? And I was like, what? And he's like, I have this character that I've been writing. Her name is Abby. He straight up said her name. He's like, her name is Abby. And I'm, I'm thinking you'd be great for her. And I'm like, awesome. And he's like, great. I'm so glad you're stoked. And then I heard nothing and nothing and nothing. <laughs> and uh, I mean, and then we shot we shot uncharted and everything. So maybe that's why it changed because he'd already like worked with me on that. So, um, God. Yeah. And then come to find out that the reason I stopped hearing about it is because he decided like, no, 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 I can't use Laura on this. <laughs> he forgot he had talked to you. Like, yeah. <laughs> he totally <laughs> forgot he had talked to me. Like, Oh yeah. And then there was a time that 
like I he had mentioned like maybe me playing Dina. And so Ashley and I were just like trying to flirt in front of him so that he could see that we had good chemistry. <laughs> Gosh, that's, that that seems awkward, awkward, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you, no when other job would require that. Yeah. I know. I mean, it was like a joke. We were jokingly flirting. It's not like we were really yeah. trying to go uh, for anything, but no, for yeah. sure. Do you remember um, anything else like early on what they said about Abby or like, did they show you photos or anything or any like early concept art where she looked different? Um, I mean, I saw her in a lot of different iterations. I think the only thing that I didn't see even before the the game came out uh, fully was that final look um, at the end of the game. I didn't realize what she was going to. I knew she was going to be more emaciated and everything, but I, I didn't even know the full extent that that was going to go to. It was shocking to me when I played. Oh, wow. my God. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What what kind of control did did Neil and, and uh, the team give you over Abby? Because I talked to when we talked to Jennifer Hale earlier, she talked about how when she did the Mass Effect games, it was you are by the book. This is like not and not in a bad right. way, but like this is how it has to, to be this. because of the way that those games are structured. It has yeah. to be that way. Um, yeah. Uh, I had a little bit more freedom because we did film those, the the game and everything. So when you're coming in early in the process like that, when you're um, working out the scenes before a lot of the gameplay has been created or those animations are finished, then you can, you can work on changing some things. And since I was cast, all of us were cast so early on in the process before the story was even completed, you know, yeah, there was a little more freedom uh, to, to give my input. I was just going to say kind of leading off of that, how much influence do you have as an actor on the game itself? Do you ever influence the game? And this can broaden past Last of Us, but are you ever like, right. oh, this game should have crafting? <laughs> you know, like, oh, that's a good idea. I don't think I've ever had that much influence. Uh, but I mean, in the past, there has, you know, the, it depends on the studio and it depends on who you're working with. You know, sometimes it is a lot more by the book, like, like Jen said, but, um, you know, sometimes if you're coming in early or if, you know, the, the um, writers have approached you or the developers have approached you and said, hey, I want to work with you specifically on this. Will you come um, and chat with us? Then there's usually a, a more of a, a give and take there. Um, like when we went and worked on Infamous, Second Son, uh, that was a really awesome uh, back and forth sort of process because we flew to Seattle. We met with the team. We spent a couple of days there and really got to know everybody and they got to know us so that when those scenes were being written, and that was the case with Last of Us too, when those scenes are being written, they know the actor that's going to be doing it. So they have you in mind. Like um, when we did, uh, when I worked on Saints Row, uh, Steve, who was the writer on that, and he's phenomenal, Steve Jaros, uh, he knew each of the personalities that the different bosses were going to have. And he wrote according to us. So, you know, as me, I got to say, you know, me running because that's something that I actually say in the booth. If I mess up a line, I say that. And so Steve is like, I'm definitely putting that in for, you know, for your character. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Incredible. Was there anything specific that you added to, to Abby or a specific like, or, or another character where you had a moment where like, something you added ended up in the game that the writers weren't intending? You know, I, I don't know. I think as having been on that project for so long, I think it just became this, this mesh, this amalgam of, of her and I, um, the same way that, that Ashley is so ingrained in who Ellie is. That's how it felt for me and Abby. So, um, you know, I'm sure Abby could have been vastly different if it had been another actor playing it. Um, and that could be really interesting to know what that would be. Um, but to me, that's just who she is. For sure. That's good. Yeah, yeah I have uh, kind of looking back at Uncharted, you played Nadine, and which is just interesting to think about, especially in the context of this year in 2020, yeah. people have sort of reevaluated. You know, oh, yeah. People of color should you know uh, characters of color let's say and who should portray them so i'm just curious if you mm -hmm. have thoughts on um even though i think you did a great that, job on that, that role like wh what are your thoughts on that or do you have thoughts on oh i have so many thoughts on that <laughs> i have so many thoughts on that and and um you know when that happened obviously you know that character hadn't been designed when i was cast uh i having you know just 
going in for the audition just assumed that she was going to look like me, you know, maybe a different face, but generally like, like me. Um, and when I saw the design after we had already, I'd done the scan in, I had done, we'd started rehearsals, we'd started filming. And I think it was like the first or second day of actually like filming that, uh, the character designs were unveiled to us. And I remember looking at it and being like, um, is that a, is anybody else like, is this a thing? And nobody else seemed to like, think it was an issue at the time. And I think because everybody else seemed to be okay with it, then I kind of went, oh, all right, I guess I'm overreacting. Maybe this isn't sure. as much of an issue. Um, and then obviously, you know, it was. And I, it, it, it should be. Um, looking at it now, you know, I learned so much from that experience. Uh, and now any anything that I audition for uh, going in, I say I need to see the character designs. And a lot of times, you know, character designs haven't been done when people are being cast. But yeah. um, I am very forthright about the fact that if it is not, if it is a character of color, it needs to be portrayed by an actor of color. And I don't yeah. want to audition for that and take that away from an actor that should be having that opportunity. And even just this year, I, I've been working on a project that I'd been working on for years and um, it kind of went through a little bit of an overhaul and the character design changed and I had a discussion and, and ended up stepping down from the role. So, oh, yeah. So, and, it, and I'm okay with that. Like it, it needs to happen that way. Did you guys decide to give her an accent then after the fact as well? Like how did that Oh no. Out? I mean, there's lots of, you know, there's lots of white people in South Africa. Oh, sure. I know. I just wasn't sure if like that was like. Part no, of no. Yeah. I, the, the role was a South African. Um, but so I, I auditioned with the accent and everything, but back to, so I, I had a, uh, I have a source that, that shall not be named that says you are quite the halo fan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm curious what being a fan of that series, what it was like to get the call to, to, to be in the series and, and, and see your name in the credits. Cause I know I'd lose uh, my mind. It was crazy. So, and you play a grunt, is that right? Yeah. I'm like, I'm a grunt. <laughs> Uh, oh God, those auditions, when they came up, like I was like freaking out. There was a crazy long audition process. Like, I feel like those auditions were so intense because we went in and you did the scenes and there were all these, cause the teams, you know, there was lots of people on each team and they wanted the chemistries to be right on each team. And so in addition to reading with multiple people to make sure that your chemistries worked right, then after that process happened, then you had to have a whole other day of auditions where it was just like movement auditions where they could see if how we worked with the weapons and how we moved through spaces and everything like that to make sure that was okay too. Um, so yeah, I was like so nervous and like ecstatic when I found out I was cast. And then for Travis to get cast as well on the opposing side. And they didn't know that we were married. Oh, really? Wow. Um, yeah. And so, you know, we showed up for rehearsals and they were like, oh, what is, what is this? You um, guys carpooled here together? <laughs> yeah, right. That's strange. Do you live next to each other? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was crazy cool. And then, you know, to like have our likeness, my likeness be put on bail was like, oh, man, just, just so crazy. We were just like jumping around the room like we're Spartans. That is that is forever going to be a stamp. Just the best coolest thing for sure what? yeah that's what is life yeah, amazing what, what do you uh what do you want to see from halo infinite what are you excited for well i don't want to say anything because maybe i know some stuff so. <laughs> yeah oh, i was going I can't, to <laughs> i'm can, not gonna say anything it'll just be a secret between us and our yeah <laughs> our few viewers <laughs> i mean from a gameplay perspective are you are, are you from a, like a gamer level like are you excited are you yeah, yeah. from a game from a gamer level yes i'm excited i I don't have as much time to game, unfortunately, potty training, uh, as I used to. And it's, it's killing me. Um, it's like a choice. Like I get to either sleep or I can see what's, what's new. Um, so sometimes the sleep wins, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited. I'll, I'll set aside some sleepless nights for that one. Yeah. Well, good luck. We'll, we'll all need a few. <laughs> yeah. Well, Laura, it's been a pleasure. Really oh, appreciate talking with you. Thanks, you guys. Uh, it's gone by so quick, but we'll we'll let you get back to it. And anything you want to promote? I mean, people can check out. Uh, oh yeah, roll obviously, obviously. Avengers if they want. Yeah, Avengers just came out. 
Um, Starfinder. This is totally, it's crazy. It's an audible book slash RPG. Check it out. It's on uh, any Amazon Alexa device. It's super fun. Just completely different. And I love it. Perfect. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thanks again. Good having you. And uh, thanks for listening. We'll be right back with some community emails. 